On October 21st, 2011, I got a call on a Friday afternoon from a neighbor saying that my house was on fire. My wife had just come to pick me up. We were gonna take the baby to the pumpkin patch so we could jump to the car and rush home. When we got to the house, we saw a huge cloud of smoke going into the sky. There were seven fire trucks, police blocking off both ends of the street, about 40 firefighters all over the roof, dragging hoses in through the windows. Um, they were busting down doors, cutting holes in the roof. Now, obviously what was happening inside was much more major than we had expected. About five hours later, uh, the chief said the fire investigators were ready to take us through the house to show us what happened. And as we walked into the house, we were just shocked. The TV melted, uh, the security sensors on the windows melted, uh, the fridge moldings and rubber all melted together. All the paint and all of the finishings in the house had bubbled over and, and just from the intense heat, the firemen said it was over a thousand degrees in the house. Everything was gone. As we made our way back towards the master bedroom, uh, we, we took a look in the nursery and it was an eerie scene seeing all of my baby daughter's toys with black charred melted bodies and, and her crib just in shambles and it was a real reminder of how fortunate again we were that nobody was home when this happened. The investigators were leading us back to the master bedroom because that's where the fire originated. One of the electrical devices in the closet sparked or malfunctioned and caught the clothes in the closet on fire, caught the wood shelves in the closet on fire and basically it was a really hot, really fast moving fire because it had so much fuel. I panned around the room, our bed was charcoal, the dresser was charcoal, there was a TV that was mounted to the right of the closet that had fallen to the ground and it was totally oxidized. Uh, basically there was nothing that survived in the bedroom. As I was looking around I noticed there's a book on my nightstand that's right next to the closet that was unburned. There was, it was amazing that there were paper pages in the middle of this inferno that survived, and not just survived, but they were barely charred. The hard cover that binds the top was totally missing, but the sides were charred, and the pages were uh, very readable. The book was the Quran. It had been sitting on that nightstand uh, since we moved in, and you know the hair stood up on my arms and on the back of my neck. It's just, it's a really thin, light paper, and as I panned around the room and saw all these big heavy wood pieces and metal and other things that had melted and burned. To see paper that hadn't burned was pretty amazing. You know, as, my, as my dad said, the word of God didn't burn. In the Arab world, in the Pakistani world, for hundreds of years there have been stories about the Quran not burning and protecting people in times of disaster. And these are stories that my father has heard and my friends uh, that are from the Middle East have heard and it's a tradition that, that most people know of, but very few people get to see. So, you know, for the other uh, Muslims that grew up hearing of stories like this, you know, here's, here's a unique situation where we get to document and actually show evidence of it. And, um, you know, I think for people of any faith, it's a clear indicator that uh, there's a divine power and divine force out there that um, protects us and is embedded into things like our holy scriptures and, and our religious items. So hope you enjoy and I uh, definitely feel blessed that this happened in my home.